Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by some members of the sound team for Damien Chazelle's amazing new film, Babylon, Eileen Lee, uh, Millie Yatru, and Andy Nelson. Thank you all so much for doing this. I know you've all worked with Damien previously, and I guess when he first talked to you about the sound for this film uh, and how he wanted it to sound, for lack of a better question, like what did what were those discussions like? Yeah, um, so we, you know, he sent us a script, we read it, and uh, we were all kind of like, um, you know, it's it's a huge scale of a movie for us um, and um, uh, to cover. And so we checked with him, and he basically kind of gave us a, you know, overall direction on the soundscape for the movie is, you know, he wanted it to feel like re- real, visceral, and a little larger than life, and, you know, to break the cliches of that time period and um you know and um it should just the scene should feel like it's like a non-stop roller coaster ride uh for the audience like you know uh like a no host part kind of vibe and um and uh, also gave us some you know film references like apocalypse now um or there will be blood and stuff um just you know for apocalypse now because that's like so many like overlapping planes of action um uh, that for the sound we need to also focus on um to work with the music uh, from justin and stuff and then so i guess i kind of want to just start at the top like we we're saying quickly before here the movie is incredible and there's so much sound for lack of a better uh, word than you the opening scene is this incredible uh sequence that i know has already drawn a lot of discussion where uh the character manny played by damian uh, uh diego calva excuse me is trying to get an elephant up a hill and the elephant uh explodes its bowels on one of the men trying to do that and i've never seen anything like that first of all and then the sound <laughs> I will never forget. I, there's a lot of sounds in this that I was like, I'll just be hearing them burned in my brain. But that one, oh, no. the, the pop of the the explosion <laughs> there is just ridiculous. I guess, can you talk about like specifically like doing that sound and like kind of like that sequence in general? Because like, I think like you said, there's so much action going on and so much movement and like, it's just very intense. Uh, yeah. I guess, can you talk about that and how you guys kind of work together on that? Yeah. So yeah, that that first scene uh, is actually the first scene that... Um, Tom Cross uh, passed on to me to to do a first pass of the design work um, while it was still in assembly cut. Um, so uh, because, you know, the truck itself, it kind of helps also build up and set up the movie, the tone of the movie. But, uh, you know, the, the truck itself um, for the production that's used, you know, can't really be reused because it's like a modern, a more modern engine in there. So um, we kind of... Um, recorded and sourced like uh uh a 19 uh 1923 Ford model TT truck and I recorded it at like a Cal City airport um so we have the room and and tow it and hook up the 100 year old truck to like a modern day truck and like to tow it so to give it like this sound of it under stress and pressure and then um so we use that sound of the stressed out engine of the truck and also of uh you know many crappy car um uh to build like uh its tension on the weight up the hill and as for the elephant because they couldn't film an actual elephant on set and um it's all like practical model and then some cg so no we added sound to help ground it to make it more real and so uh for like the animal the elephant vocals you know um i uh used some sounds that was from a library that was recorded off elephants and from thailand and stuff mm-hmm. and um uh one of the things that damien wanted me um to investigate to to kind of research on is um the sound of the uh, elephant pooping <laughs> it should sound uh, a lot no the same thing same idea it's like a lot larger bigger than life okay. um and so i did some research on like youtube and stuff of like elephant po- pooping and peeing and uh it actually already sounded pretty big so i felt like we need to go even bigger than that um uh, just to um you know create the surprise and so um 
uh, a variety of sounds were used, um, you know, um, besides like some like elephant vocals going strat, uh, having like stressed out uh, vocals. Um, I um, added like, you know, um, like plunger explosions of like toilet from from toilet bowls and um, uh, seal uh, the animal seal growls, guttural growls, or pitch down burps, um, uh, blowing bubbles into like a, a shallow tub of um, thick, um, you know, liquid, and um, and um, just a mishmash of like, you know, oozing and stuff. But part of also what made it also more gross is also hearing the poor uh, elephant wrangler like choking his mouth yes. like gurgling movement of sound of the gurgles of the uh, poop in his mouth and stuff when he tries to talk uh, so so we tried replacing some of that from the production sound and uh, you know just um main thing is about building the arc is almost like music right um to to everything to kind of pick at the end and just do an abrupt cut yeah the abrupt cut is amazing and like you said i think it definitely sets the tone for the movie and like kind of like it honestly reminded me of like the beginning of Saber Pride Ryan, where you have this like oh. incredibly intense sequence, and then it's like, okay, now we're going to get into the rest of the movie. A Andy, you you've done so much work on these incredible musicals. You worked with like uh, obviously West Side Story last year, and I know you worked with Damien on, on a La La Land prior to this as well. Can you talk a little about? There's so much music in this movie as well, and like that opening party is just complete chaos, and the music is just driving the whole thing. And I guess can you talk about like how you guys approach that. And I guess I imagine working with Justin as well uh, to get all the music sounding exactly right. And kind of like going from what we're here, what the characters are hearing from the stage versus like what's on the soundtrack, yeah. I guess. Can you talk a little about that and like how you kind of figure that yeah. out? Yeah, absolutely. The, the uh, Going back just to the script for a minute, I remember when I started reading it, I got to about page six, I think. And I thought, oh my gosh, if this film comes out anything like this script, this is going to be wild. And sure enough, of course, it did come out exactly like the script. Um, so that was the first sort of fun surprise of the whole thing was just that, that he really delivered it. And um, yeah, he and Justin work very closely together. Um, you know, Damien spends a lot of time during his edit to compile and really work sound as well. A lot of stuff that Eiling's being fed into the Avid along with the, any ADR pieces. Um, that Millie's been involved in and um, obviously dialogue work. But so so he has a pretty good template. So we have something to work against in terms of a roadmap for the movie. And um, but a lot of the music is evolving all the time. So what happens, of course, is that Justin will give um, some. First of all, we got all the pre-record material, which they're using on the set, of course. And then you've got the sort of literal score. Um, but it's it's evolving the whole time. And um, because of their relationship together, it's very close. Um, Justin is literally down the corridor from, from Damien and constantly feeding thoughts and ideas to the picture department. So by the time it comes into me, it's clearly now gone through a much bigger phase because it's now had all the all the proper recordings done. There's no there's no MIDI material anymore or synth stuff. It's all actually now, you know, real orchestrations. And so Part of the process for working with Damien at that point is for him to get used to the newer sound, if you like, because it's it's it, you know it, it's now become very cinematic and and big, which he loves. So we spend a bit of time going through listening to various tracks within the music, you know, brass versus strings versus guitars, uh, pianos, etc., and just making sure that we're really getting the very best out of everything. So that's. That's kind of my process on the music side, working with with Damien, and uh, it was, yeah, La La Land was 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 tr tremendous fun, but this this really pushed us, uh, you know, quite a bit further in terms of the craziness. I mean, look, the pitch is so bold, the sound had to be bold with it, and I think that was the that was the key thing that I came away with when I first watched it was the we have to step it up here because this is a this is such a powerful picture. So yeah. we had a lot of fun with that. It, it, and it seems like, like I said, it seems like you guys all didn't have a lot of fun with, with, with the sound. Millie, I want to ask about you about maybe we could talk a little about the, the first day on the set at, at the at the Kinescope set, which is just another great chaotic sequence. But there's so much dialogue happening in that sequence and so many people kind of like speaking at the same time and cutting back and forth, I guess. Can you talk about like how you approach that kind of sequence uh, from your perspective? Yes, 
Sure. Um, that sequence was really well recorded by um, the, the member of our team who's not in this interview, Steve Morrow. Um, so that day, he, as usual, he made sure most of the people that we see in the shot were mic'd. And then he also recorded the, the onset musicians who were playing. And as she travels through, um, so, I, so that, that was one of the earliest scenes that I got sent to work on from Tom Cross, the picture editor. And uh, so I, when I opened it up, there were like, you know, usually the avid tracks, there are not that many, but this was like, I don't know, 20 tracks or something like that. And so I had to go through and figure out what was what. And so I kind of whittled it down and cleaned it up and then got it to a place where I felt I was ready to then hand it over to Eileen because um, she, in the meantime, was um, sweetening and augmenting and adding more like llama sounds and, you know, things that, you know, weren't recorded on the set. Um, the efforts of the people fighting in the background, the guys who are fighting, there's a, like one of the sets is people fighting. And so um, then she did a pass where she uh, panned everything and so that everything got panned together. And, um, and then ultimately then it went back during the final, then it was handed it over to Andy, and then he in incorporated it with all the music. So it was a that was a that's my one, one of my favorite sequences in the film because I feel like it really puts you in that world, and you're just surrounded by the chaos and and joy of being on a movie set. Absolutely, and it's also it's also it's also well, I was going to say it's also a wonderful contrast because you're on a silent movie set and you've got this incredibly chaotic soundscape going on. It's a great contrast to when we then go to the, the sound movie recording, which is complete silence. And uh, I think it's a great counterpoint to that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And and to um to to add on to the other production sounds that like Steve had included, besides all the dialogue and all that, it had a lot of like um uh on set um um music tracks too, um from pro that were provided from Justin that um uh, uh, we kind of also had to you know to start off with to establish like when we would hear what dialogue and music and what keeps playing on and what doesn't and to build it all up uh, on screen and off screen sounds um, to build it all up into this like controlled chaos um, per se. Um, and then for the final, then uh, Justin and um, his music editors, they would come in and uh, replace all those production um, music um, with like better recorded, cleaner sounding um, uh, music that they redid. Yeah, no, it's incredible. That sequence is so great. And I, Andy, I definitely love that the the uh, the transition from silent to talking in that scene is amazing. But before we get there, I just not to, I think like not to continue to ask you about like bathroom sound effects. But right before there, there's a hilarious <laughs> scene with uh, Brad Pitt when he's in the bathroom and he's speaking to one of uh, like an executive or whoever about like the transition to sound, and he's like, <laughs> "Who would want?" sound in their movies and you cut to like a great uh explosive again poop sound mm -hmm. effect that i just get to laugh every i've seen the movie twice and it's just it's just oh, yeah. it's a great laugh and i guess can you right. talk a little about that because it's such a perfect uh perfect cut to that sound it's great i just love it i don't know it was in the script um well when, when i read it I, was, I don't know i just like broke out laughing um but um yeah it was in the script and then like when damien and tom they were working out the cut you know uh they did um also added some um sounds in there um as a you know as a placeholder and um and then uh it was a pretty big sound and like like you know this in babylon there's so many genres right it feels like it's a movie with many different genres like you have drama you have comedy um and some action and um and so with the sound work you know we have to decide like when to play it more grounded and real and when to go full-blown more like over the top and for this bathroom scene uh it's one of those that the over the top work um, really so <laughs> so um it was a combination of sounds it's actually uh one of our effects editors, he um, actually, yeah, he recorded his wow. actual, like, he had it up like stuff. <laughs> and uh, I took some of that recording. <laughs> yeah. And and then uh, lay it with some other uh, effects. And then uh, and then I uh, added like a grunt um, for the guy 
poor guy in the incredible. stall uh, after he um, <laughs> Again, the truly, sudden outburst. Truly, truly <laughs> incredible. So, uh, but like you said, the movie's a lot of genres, and I mean the scene I think uh, where Mar where Margot's character uh, Nelly is is shooting on sound a sound stage for the first time with sound is so great and the the way the comedy builds in that but with the silence especially and you see it in a movie theater and just it's dead you can hear a pin drop in the audience because you can't even you have to pay attention right because there's no sound i guess can you the, the three of you talk about that sequence and like kind of how the complications of even getting that to sound the way it does or not sound the way it does right because there's so much silence embedded baked into that 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 sequence uh, well, I'll just jump in quickly. The, 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 again, this was um, this was all about the timing and levels, to be honest with you, because you wanted the sense that she was repeating it exactly, and yet obviously not, because she would either talk too loud or she would miss a mark, or, 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 or there'd be a, another sound in the studio that they would be hearing and they would have to stop the shooting. So it was really about... Um, that was about being very careful in how it was crafted so that every single thing had the same sort of repeat. Having said that, there were sounds that Eileen can talk about, which were build up sounds of anxiety and, and the sweat and the feeling of uh, that, that she was getting, knowing she had to kind of remember her lines. And um, so it, and it goes over a long period. It's, it's, it's a long sequence, but of course it builds and builds and builds and becomes funnier and funnier. So as more and more sounds start to come in, but it was all for me. It was all about achieve that we could get this exact sort of re repetitive sense in the beginning that was important. But for Eileen, I think it was creating all the other little tension moments, right, Eileen? Yeah, correct. Um, that's another one of the uh, scenes that I had to work on earlier on from uh, using Tom Cross's assembly cut, um, and then um, which um, I just followed the style, the direction from the script originally for that version. And uh, so I crafted out something, gave it back to Dam Damien and Tom. They started doing the director's cut on it and made some tweaks and stuff. And then we carried that forward um, with more of Damien's direction. Um, but like um, Andy had you know, um, set it up really well, um, it's a slow boiling scene. Um, so, um, every you know we want it to feel like things are being repeated but you know um it's not quite always the same sound but slightly different sound so the way that like Damien and Tom had edited the picture um like they would say no next take and then the door will open again and uh sometimes like um they uh we would uh use like just part of the middle of the door creak and stuff um just like little subtleties like that and then when Natalie is like getting nervous behind the set and um um uh we build up like you know um the sound of like um uh, like low drony heartbeat and like a little bit of a hit space stuff and then the light like, buzzing like the smaller sounds becomes mm. larger than life huge yeah. um so um so like even for her first take like the door creak open is like a lot uglier sounding than the later doors and and bigger sounding and everything is more emphasized because we wanted to play up the silence of it all and how much sounds are being picked up and then as the scene progresses you know uh like andy said like things starting to go a little bit more haywire and people are getting more tired um and like um 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 uh, and then like with the fight and like slamming off the like every time like the poor cameraman's camera box gets like open and shut to sell the heat in like how stuffy it is in there so we made sure like the sound of his doors and his porthole windows uh, more like has like this airtight like like a suction mm -hmm. sound and mm -hmm. open and close and it's all heavy um, to help sell that that and then also you know uh i we, we played out the sound of like when the for one time when we see from inside um i uh we also played up the sound of the loud camera whirring in there because right. uh, from what some researchers like the camera guys besides being like super hot and like stuffy in there it's super loud in there right. too um yeah. and then to contrast it like once it's out, when you're outside of the camera box it's like quiet and pristine yeah. and 
<laughs> it's just not the pole camera guy. It's 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 a it's amazing. And 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 Millie, how about you? Can you talk about that sequence as well from your sure? Yeah. Yeah, I mean the the foundation of the sequence is what was recorded on set, obviously. So so and and Damien always has this thing about he loves production sound. We we almost never do any ADR unless it's to sweeten or add to the story. We almost never replace anything. So basically, the foundation was this production sound, and um, and there were, throughout the film there are all these transitions between the grounded production sound, but then it, things start like like Andy and Eileen said, things start to change and they start to become more intense and then they go into this other realm and it, and, and it builds and builds. So um, it was, I thought that I liked that scene a lot because I like the way the two play together and you can't, almost can't even tell when it goes into this other, this other headspace where you're, you're in her head or you're, the chaos gets out of control, things like that. I don't yeah. think we enjoyed the way the sound guy was treated, though, did we? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. It's funny because um, I, I recorded the ADR. You know, I was the ADR. In addition to being a sound supervisor, I was ADR supervisor, too. And um, I remember early on when I started doing this, someone warned me and said, be careful, never give direction to the actors. because they And they quoted this one famous actor who said to this this guy, he said, um, I take my direction from the director, not the sound guy. And, and I thought, and that there's a line just like that where yeah. Nelly says, I take my direction from the, you know, not from the effing sound guy. So so <laughs> I thought I just thought that was hilarious because that's one of my biggest fears as a sound person. <laughs> That's yes, funny. <laughs> it was. It's another thing I had written down to talk to you guys about because I thought that was very rich. Uh, that sequence. We we have to wrap up here. I I, I could literally could talk to you guys about this for for much longer because, like I said, I think the sound in this movie is like I've never heard before, and I hesitate to ask about another crazy sound effect. But I think I wanted to ask about later in the film. There's a, a snake bite sequence. I will not spoil it, but the way the uh, venom oozes out of the bite, again, burned into my brain. And I guess, can you talk a little about that sound effect and how you guys kind of like work to make that sound as gross and horrifying as it does? Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Um, so for the venom oozing out, uh, um, we kind of like, uh, you know, Damien, like, as you said, uh, he kind of wanted it to sound kind of gross. Um, and uh, so uh, we did it with some, um, you know, we had our Foley Walker, Dan O'Connell, um, do some of the elements and, um, um, but, you know, Dan's the best and uh, he uh, just like, you know, most likely he just used some, it could have been some like camp soup or something, but uh, uh, I don't know. I got to check with him what the secret sauce is. Um, yeah. But um, uh, we also sweetened it with some other uh, uh, sound effects um, um, from our library, um, the, some of the oozing sound. Um, huh. it's, but it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely memorable. It's just the it's right feel. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, especially, it. It. And especially the way it's edited again with the Tom's editing is incredible as well. We, we have Yeah, and there. her yeah. sucking oh, the it's band. Just, it's um, awesome. um, it's, that's the part that, yeah. <laughs> it's just great. Uh, this movie is amazing. Uh, the Babylon uh, sound team, the, all of you acclaimed uh, in in the field and Oscar nominees and Andy, Oscar winner for Andy. I mean, just an incredible group here. Uh, thank you so much uh, for doing this. I really appreciate it. No, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.